Um, I just want to say this conference is so much more than this in the room, which is always what we wanted. Guy Davis over there from Disability Solutions in South Africa just pointed out to us that our streaming that is happening here in the conference has reached South Africa perfectly. Is that right, Guy? We are having wonderful streaming. So we are going outside this room. Don't we love it? So anybody else who's got anybody in some part of the world that can tell us this good news, please get them to, to just to connect in with us because we get the conversation further and further and further. Now, our final keynote speaker before we go into the great couch conversation with Tom Butcher is um, by a gentleman that I met last year during the Zero Conference, actually. I met him for lunch. I had heard about him and I kind of walked away from the conversation thinking, oh my gosh, there's another crazy, dangerous dreamer too. And this gentleman is Julian Hatschief and he's the co-founder and CEO of Prima Kamed Group. But what I remember Julian for, and I very much look forward to him talking to him later on today, is like me, he likes to do dangerous sports and loves fast cars and is an athlete and loves, loves to cause trouble and doesn't let anything get in his way. So I am dying to hear what wonderful Julian Hatschief has to say. Well, thank you, Caroline. Um, Dear ladies and gentlemen, you see a very privileged man up here. First of all, um, because I have the opportunity talking to such an honorable audience like you are. Secondly, um, because I, I may look back on a very fulfilling, exciting, beautiful life despite being uh, disabled. Besides being visually impaired, my sight is less than 2% um, caused by a juvenile macular degeneration. Um, well, I experienced this when I was seven years old and um, from this time on I, I could still read a bit and um, then it was a magnifying glass and then it was less and less. But I, well, I, I was raised in Innsbruck a little city, very sporty city with two Olymp Winter Olympics in Tyrol, in Austria in the mountains. Um, after my high school, I graduated in the business administration. Um, started out in the civil service in the um, Tyrolian, the provincial government. And after some years, founded my own company. Um, started this from scratch with some partners. Um, as a one-man show in those days, 26 years ago. Now we um, own and operate um, five private hospitals, rehabilitation centers, outpatient clinics. Um, we employ around 1,800 um, people, and um, I own another um, group. It's the Humanocare. Uh, that we, with this company group, I, we, we operate um, several nursing homes, entities for people with special needs, and some rehab centers with another 600 um, people. Well, work is not the only thing I do. Um, I've been very lucky, I skated in the Austrian national team, in the, was in the speed skating team, participated in the world championships. Um, well, later on, I, um, I got the opportunity to, to race in, in, in skiing, in the Paralympic skiing, at, uh, World Cup, Euro Cup. I participated in Sestria to Reno in the 2006 Paralympics. Um, I climbed the highest Austrian mountains and abroad and uh, skied with a helicopter in, um, in, in the Canadian Rockies. Toured around the world with my family, uh, went to safaris to Africa or with my son, uh, uh, the canoe in a tent in the Swedish wilderness. So, a really exciting life. And, well, how was this? Well, and, and it should actually, shouldn't, shouldn't be finished that soon, I hope so. Um, so, how, how was this possible? Um, well, my loving mom, and a very challenging dad 
my two best friends, my brothers, gave me a very good environment, secure environment, when I was young. Uh, I met the right persons at the right time, uh, at the right place, obviously. I was very lucky throughout my life. was born on a Sunday. Maybe that helped. Um, and, um, and I believe it's attitude. My personal attitude, but also the attitude of others who gave me the chance that I could show what I was able to achieve. My personal attitude, um, there's no such thing as impossible. Um, a glass is always half full, never half empty. Um, I'm very ambitious. Um, I'm very, very passionate. I'm always ready going the extra mile. Um, well, nowadays I think I'm quite self-confident. Um, but that's what success over the years obviously um, develops. Um, well, and, and I'm always optimistic, at least most of the time, and I learned that it's not always the right thing going the straight way. It's sometimes um, much better going the winded path, but never losing the goal out of the eye even though if the eye doesn't work too well, but um, just going for your goals, making the impossible possible. And um, what I had to learn too, and um, what inspired me an awful lot was, for example, that um, if you want to be successful, you need other people. You need support, you need friends, you need a team. And I tell you, it's not very easy um, to ask others to help you, to support you, when you're visually impaired. When you're a young guy, you want to do everything yourself. You want to be independent. You want to drive cars, even without a driving license. God thanks, nothing happened. At least nothing severe, I guess. Um, so. It's, um, it takes some time to make you understand that it's wiser doing things together with others. I'll give an example. When I studied um, business administration, I realized I could never do it by my own because my eyes were not capable enough to, to, to run me through thousands of pages. So what I did is I asked some friends of mine, well, why don't we um, organize a learning team. You read the pages to me, and I will summarize them and try to put out the nutshell, you know, what's most important on this page. So they could make the notices. And we all four went through the studies, um, and we were actually excellent students. So um, they realized it was helpful for them. Um, making even the better marks. And for me, it was the only chance to, to, to go through my studies at all. So I needed them, really. But somehow, um, we created a, a win-full profit, a win-win situation for all of us. And that's what I think is so important to create those win-win situations. And um, as you, as officials, as um, entrepreneurs, as employers, you should realize that people with a disability, that they are capable to do enormously much. That diversity is great in a company. Um, that collaborating with different talents is great. And so what we need is, on the one side, certainly role models like Caroline Casey, maybe somebody like me, but we need those role models of employers like Cisco, like Cisco and others who are here in this um, conference and around the world, who are willing to give people 
with a disability a chance. But not only due to their corporate social responsibility they feel, but because they realize that it's a windfall profit for their enterprise. Um, when I look into my own company, by the way, um, here you see uh, green too, so that's our company colors, by the way. Um, we, we are on the, on the beginning of a journey to bring more people with a disability into our company. And what we, what we um, realized at the very beginning, first of all, we have to tear down the barriers in our head. It's not so much the barrier um, um, going over stairs or, or, or taking a lift instead of traveling, going to over stairs. It's a barrier up here that you have to um, that you have to train people how to get along with people with a disability. We started out in our own academy, a program um, where we tried to teach our employees how to address people with a disability, with different disabilities in our hospitals, for example. And, um, and it was amazing what we got back from our employees when they said, okay, it was so, it, it was astounding, it was really surprising for us when we had to travel with a wheelchair um, through the door to a certain location in our hospital. When we couldn't see anything, you know, with those, um, whatever, blankets in front of your head. Uh, so, we, so we had to, to figure out how to, how to get to a location. Um, we tried to teach them how to address people so that they can take it when they are disabled. What are the, what are the, the words um, make it easier? And what are the wordings we have to avoid? So, and giving our employees who believe that they don't have any disability, um, that um, they, they're not afraid. Because quite often, people don't know how to handle us with, a dis with our disabilities. So I think it's a learning process in our companies, in our society, and we're all gaining lots of profits out of this process. And when I st stand here, or sit actually here today, um, what, what, I can, what I can tell you, um, just try it. You will see it will work. Um, I thank you very much for the openness, and I, well, I ask you for your support. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Julian. Sorry, I'm just running up the centre. Thank you very much. Um, I definitely warn against me being a role model for anybody. No, uh, not at all, unless you want to get yourself in trouble a lot. What I do think is a hugely important is actually business leader role models. We need to see more business leaders. And Julian, with your business leader hat on, this is powerful. Can we go out and get all your friends to think like you do? That's how we make the connections happen. And I just want to say the combination of those three keynote speaks is exactly what we hold here in Zero. Different perspectives with open head heart leadership. And I want you to give a massive round of applause to our wonderful group from Daniela to the minister to Christine to Julian and to Martin. This is where we actually make change happen.